Hi again. Uh, thank you for being here with us. Uh, we will continue now the program with the next uh, session, which is a panel discussion on traditional building knowledge and the connection of, of this uh, building, building knowledge with uh, local communities with uh, four experiences that are dealing with um, uh, this uh, particular aspect of, of traditional architecture and uh, our focus also on, on how, how this uh, knowledge is being passing on. Uh, through new generations. Uh, the, the, this uh, panel discussion will be moderated by Besam Alasali. Uh, Besam, he's a PhD candidate at the Center for Natural Materials Innovation of the University of Cambridge. And he's uh, also the, the, a co-founder uh, member of, of um, IW Lab in uh, Damascus, and also the a co-founder of a uh, new initiative that she, that he has uh, started to develop uh, in uh, in Valencia in Spain which is named uh, Cerca and which will be dedicated also to the transmission to the to the passing on of uh, traditional uh, knowledge thank you Besan. thank you Alejandro for this introduction and um, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to to be moderating this uh, this uh, excellent session here um, specifically because I'll be talking with four specialists from four great initiatives about traditional buildings and, and vernacular buildings and how they overlap with the notion of community development. And um, we have with us um, four, uh, four panelists. Um, I'll, I'll start introducing you the way you, you sort of appear on my screen. So. First, we have uh, Marta Colmenares Fernandez, and uh, she's an architect specialist um, uh, in planning and land landscape management. Uh, she's also um, doing her PhD thesis on urbanization uh, of rural areas in the oases of Dara Valley territory in in, uh, in Morocco, and she's here representing Terra Chidia, uh, um, an organization that worked between Morocco and Spain. Um, we have uh, we will make a, a great leap, a good jump to reach to Iran. We have with us uh, Rizo Khazan. She's uh, an architect restoration specialist, uh, member of Intbao Iran, and she leads uh, uh, workshops for regeneration and rehabilitation of Tar village in Isfahan region in, in Iran. So good morning or afternoon, Marta and, and Rizo. Um, then we uh, welcome uh, Maurizio Cesprini from uh, Canova Association, uh, who has been it's been founded uh, almost 20 years ago, and it will be great to to, to see how this experience developed uh, in the north of Italy. Uh, last but not least, uh, Jonas uh, Skleavonos. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, who's uh, also a member of. Uh, Poloki in, in, in Greece. Uh, he's, uh, he's a graduate architect from the University of Patras and uh, the Technical University of Athens, and now also doing a PhD at uh, University of Antwerp in Communities and Tacit Knowledge. Uh, welcome, the four of you. Thank you very much for joining us here. Uh, I am really looking forward to hear everything you will you will uh, let us know. But as I as you noticed, I didn't um, introduce your initiatives. I introduced you, and 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 that that mission I will leave to you. Uh, maybe you can you can do it the same order. So Marta Rizzo and and then Maurizio and then Jonas, if you can, in four or five minutes each, tell us a little bit about um, it is, um, uh, how how you work with vernacular knowledge and and what kind of central methods and ethos uh, you do in doing that. How you work with artisans. And mix experimentation with with uh, with the traditional building. Um, thank you very much for joining, Marta. If you want, you can you can start. Yeah, Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. We work in the south of Morocco. And the element that is being rehabilitated is as important as the techniques used to do so. And why? Because if we had used uh, other materials or other technique, um, the situation would be completely different. So it's very difficult for us to um, not 
not link both things. And that is why we created our workshops for the construction with Earth. And we work the, uh, the following way. We always work in public elements, so the um, interventions will have a positive, positive impact for the whole community. We usually work on entrance doors to these villages and, and um, meeting spaces for the whole for the whole city they're usually all built with earth and inside we find the housing so the most important elements within these casares these houses are the mosques as well as the entrance doors these are small uh, places where merchants were usually welcome merchants who went through the areas with their caravans and they would stay there to uh, rest and they could have their commercial exchange once those caravans uh, stopped these spaces we're not we're not really used to welcome the population coming from outside but rather their spaces for the local population to gather and this is where we intervene we usually what we do is work with master craftsmen local master craftsmen who lead the process of the work and you have to understand that we're not talking about masters, as you would uh, mention in other sessions, who only deal with a building. They're usually uh, people who live in the village who know the architecture because they live in that architecture and they know how to rehabilitate it because they live there and because their fathers and grandfathers uh, taught them those techniques. It's true that we find that these capacities that the population has are being lost for different reasons. One is because, for instance, they started working with concrete and people abandon their housings and they now build the houses that used to be built with the earth are now being built with uh, concrete and that's how they lost their skills or maybe because men who were in charge of rehabilitating those houses have immigrated to other areas in Morocco and no one in the family knows how to rehabilitate that architecture but we have found in all villages people who still live in those um, earth houses and know those traditional techniques and it's with that population that we work so how do we work well we hire four or five masters from these villages who know how to work with those um, earth techniques so it's usually adobe and sometimes sometimes it's a different uh, sort of, of technique depending on the village and we work for two weeks with them and the rehabilitation of these entrances to access these homes where um, architecture students from all over the world um, come they usually come from the middle east from south america and we work in the rehabilitation of these spaces so these participants of the workshops um, are part of of the of the construction group and it's the masters who tell them what the techniques are but always in this rehabilitation processes we have youngsters from each village working in there so that that uh, craft is not lost and so that they can learn it in the end there are heritage elements that have been rehabilitated for the whole community in these spaces we reuse those places those places as gathering places and obviously we're in a place where the weather is very hard it's very harsh maybe outside of the um, of the home you might have 40 degrees outside of the of this space but in this covered places from a weather standpoint they work very well and they're starting to use it again because it's a very nice place and we are valuing the work of these masters and we're also training the participants of the workshops who go back to their countries of origin with uh, training and techniques that they didn't know and that had been lost in their countries but we're also training the people the youngsters from that place so that that know-how is not lost and our project is not just rehabilitation it's also cooperation because it's a project where everyone is giving something and everyone is receiving something the local population is receiving spaces that have been rehabilitated for their use but also masters are are providing their knowledge the participants in the workshop are getting a training but they're also 
um, giving a hand. They're working so that the whole community can get that space back after it's been rehabilitated. So it's a methodology that we set up. And for now, it's working quite well because it is a project where everyone is giving something and everyone is getting something, but especially the local population because the local population is being um, placed at the head of the whole process. They lead the process. So there is a process of ownership of the local community of their heritage and their knowledge, which is very important. Uh, for this explanation, um, and it, it sort of leads to, to, to what Arizo also was, was, uh, this was telling us uh, so, some days ago when we were talking about this panel, about her work also in, uh, in, uh, in Tar. And maybe that's a, that's a good, uh, good continuation of what Marta was doing, because this is a similar experience rather from a, a different location. So Arizo, please, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm uh, presenting. Uh, I'm a member of the workshop on the regeneration group, which uh, uh, in our uh, series of workshop, uh, we try to overcome the issue of uh, losing all these traditional buildings and uh, traditional techniques. And moreover, that uh, how to learn, how to teach the new academic uh, generation about these techniques and uh, moreover, this bilateral cooperation between the uh, local craftsmen and uh, uh, academia, which could uh, uh, make a, a space for both of them to learn from each other. And so in our project, uh, we have, uh, it's a series of projects that we uh, ha have a car village as our uh, pilot uh, village uh, that uh, in uh, we try to, uh, in a series of our workshop, we try to have two days of uh, lectures in, in advance to going to the village for people to understand about this regeneration, rehabilitation, and the importance of this in the, the uh, life of, uh, in the two days life. And further, uh, we are going to the context of the village and uh, try to um, let people, let all these students uh, understand the whole context at first and understand the whole, the whole, uh, um, like um, architecture of the village. And then we are starting uh, to work on a specific project. Uh, in uh, the first, uh, in our first project, we had this uh, private owner that we were doing this regeneration of the. A uh, small house, and in our, uh, our second uh, workshop, which happened last year, uh, we worked on the public space, which was a water mill, in the center of the village. So, in these two different type of uh, experience, uh, we were bringing uh, in advance to start the uh, start the workshop. We were uh, uh, at first. Uh, in, uh, letting know the people of the village that they are going to start to do this and then we had we had to choose our sites uh and doing some um, site works and then uh we were um, we tried to have this uh on-site design and on-site decision for the uh what we want to do so it was not the like planned beforehead and like bringing people there so we're doing this like uh, making decision of what we can do for the uh, these buildings and for the whole village uh, to start to do this regeneration and rehabilitation of the village and then uh, we were starting our work like really hard <laughs> hard work from like seven in the morning till four five in the evening and then uh, we had a lot of uh, local craftsmen who were helping us uh, during they were teaching the students how to do the different techniques and then each person who were more uh, kind of professional in one technique were continuing the work and we were doing these 10 days of intensive work uh, to overcome like one and to kind of uh, rehabilitate one building and in this procedure uh, it was nice to have this hands-on work uh, for all the students, because we just, we, as an architect student, we don't have this possibility to have the physical activities, <laughs> like, and we're all always studying the, you know, the, just the theoretical uh, courses. And uh, in other way, we had the, uh, there was this kind of 
smooth communication with the local people and with the academia and the students from younger generations that's uh, as a they could understand that why we are there and it's not just learning about the traditional technique it's more about like saving this cultural heritage mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of our workshops, uh, actually, we had this uh, everyday lecture during our workshops so that we, we were bringing people from all around the world. And we we're always having the tragedy of people also in our uh, lectures to uh, for the people to know that what's going on also in the world and like uh, how people are appreciating these uh, conservations of traditional and vernacular um, material and vernacular te uh, techniques. And uh, after all these days, we were trying to go back to Tehran and uh, have this uh, thinking of, again about what we did and uh, like all this documentation of what we did and then have this exhibition. So this exhibition also could help us to promote more, uh, more than one village, that's, uh, like just the, commu the, the community of one village, but it's more to other people to see what we did and then can continue this because it's just it's not just about one village there are thousands of villages that are becoming abandoned and losing these uh, yeah. techniques so uh, yeah after our workshop we were always trying to have these feedbacks and like every student had this their experience their own experience and bringing up with some video or some stuff that other people could, could come and see and maybe later join us and have this bigger platform and uh, group of people to continue this project. Thank you very much, uh, Rizu, yeah. for the explanation. And um, 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 we can probably, Maurizio, you can uh, let, t tell us a little bit about um, how did you start and, and how, how what is it that Canova is doing right now and how it sort of developed in, in probably brief uh, yeah. sort of description. Thank you very much for joining us, by the way. Yeah, thank you to you. <clears throat> Canova Association was uh, founded <clears throat> in 2001 after the work of uh, restoration of the village of Canova. <clears throat> and uh, the goal of the Canova Association uh, was to uh, preserve uh, historical villages that uh, we have uh, here in the area. We are on the north of Italy, uh, close to the um, to the Switzerland border, and uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, settlements, vernacular settlement settlements that are more or less abandoned. So uh, our work uh, is, uh, of course, based in the valley, but uh, also we want to get in touch with uh, other experience in Italy and uh, all around the uh, Europe mainly, and. Um, one of the, uh, so we call our work uh, uh, historical continuation because uh, we want to maintain uh, uh, traditional techniques uh, as much as uh, we can. And uh, because we think uh, that they are work uh, very well, and so we want to reuse uh, in the future. And uh, we do that uh, in uh, uh, different ways, <clears throat> of course. Uh, as uh, Marta and Ariza said, uh, we uh, organize uh, um, workshops uh, too with students uh, university uh, from university in uh, uh, from Italy and uh, from other universities all around the world, and uh, we like to <clears throat> organize workshop uh, with. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, putting different uh, actors uh, in the in the workshop. For example, we ask uh, uh, artisan from the from the area to join us, uh, and uh, we have a lot of good artisan. They have uh, skills uh, and they know how to work uh, by stones uh, and carves, uh, which is uh, in the area the the vernacular buildings are made mainly by stones but uh, also artisans uh, they even in restoration they uh, use more modern techniques uh, because they prefer or because they need they have to and uh, one other actor that uh, we involve of course are students uh, and uh, we know that the students want to 
uh, go out the, the class uh, and uh, touch materials uh, and uh, put their hands on. And uh, then uh, we have uh, buildings. There's a lot of buildings all around and uh, we can also learn from buildings because uh, in the last uh, uh, year so we lost a lot of knowledge and uh, in, in a way the only way to uh, get information is uh, by reading uh, buildings as a book and uh, so in our workshop uh, we put all these uh, uh, elements together and uh, always uh, it's uh, an opportunity to uh, learn from each other just uh, let me uh, put one example here uh, one time we did a, a bar of vault uh, during a workshop uh, which is the uh, easiest vault that you can do but uh, it was clear uh, the difference between uh, study the vault uh, a bar of vault from a book uh, or uh, do it so uh, even craftsmen that follow us uh, or students uh, or teachers uh, uh, when you start to do a form, when you lay on top uh, tons of materials, when you have to decide mortar on the uh, shape of the stones. Uh, so in this kind of um, situation, everyone can learn a lot. This day, I think it's the main meaning of what uh, we are doing. In our great, work. great. Thank you very much, Maurizio. Jonas, um... You, you, you sort of also uh, work on a follow also like a similar model um, and you, you also work with stone. I, I know that uh, Koloki works with stone so so perhaps we, we can wrap up with the, with your experience as well explained. Great, I had to unmute myself. Um, thank you, thank you for this very kind invitation. Um, yes, uh, we, do work a lot, uh, we do work a lot with stone, but uh, maybe I should first say uh, a couple of words about Buluki. Um, Buluki, or as its full name, is Itinerant Workshop on Traditional Building Techniques. Um, so uh, Buluki is uh, an education and research uh, collaborative based in Athens, uh, Greece. And yes, as most of the groups here, all of the groups here, it aims to the study of traditional craftsmanship, um, mainly as a kind, an example of knowledge um, that represents a different paradigm, perhaps, to you know, established or modernist uh, attitudes towards knowledge. Um, in Greek, buluki uh, means gago, a traveling group. So it's actually a name evoking the tradition of traveling companies of uh, stonemasons and craftsmen. So the idea is that uh, we travel around Greece and uh, the Balkans or the Mediterranean and we try you know, to, to trace and document uh, practices and concepts that uh, more or less have been lost. So indeed we try to recover this traditional knowledge. Um, we should also say that we have uh, mostly worked in Epirus, which is a, a mountainous area of Greece um, once celebrated for its stonemasons. And also, uh, some of us originate from there, uh, so it was also, uh, you know, a way to approach this knowledge, uh, also in personal terms. I mean, I should probably say that this whole thing began when uh, Panagiotis and Christophorus, two uh, founding members of our group, started to travel around the villages of Epirus, asking questions about, you know, uh, are there any stonemasons that still know the craft? Um, so another thing uh, to describe how we work would be that we, we try to combine uh, ethnographic film techniques with uh, practical seminars and uh, participatory building projects in a sense. So um, we could say that a looking project is um, a small work or perhaps not that small sometimes uh, that tries to engage uh, locals but also students and academics, uh, professionals, um, into what could be described as a platform, you know, for, uh, for broader dialogue. Uh, also, of course, uh, it is important to say that we always want to leave some work behind. So we try to focus, you know, not on some educational or 
experimental constructions, but give uh, give our project a more complete form. So in the past, we have you know worked on uh, rebuilding some uh, pathways, some code pathways, or uh, providing communities with certain structures that they might want, such as you know wood fire dome, etc. Uh, and maybe one thing I should also say before concluding is that we really try to focus on you know everyday settings, perhaps rather than uh, you know monumental structures. Of course, we're interested in uh, restoration in general, but also in contemporary practices. So uh, we try you know to uh, listen to the local communities and see many times what they want, what they need, and somehow try to interpret this in terms of a project and how this could also bring together different actors, as uh, Maurizio said, to meet together in such a common ground. Thank you, Jonas. What, this is a, a fantastic end note that you ended up there with, with regard of, of communities, and with which I would like also to extend now and just ask questions, and maybe some of you can answer these questions. Um, so uh, we all, I mean, the panel is about community and, and conservation, right? And and the question is, how do we situate and communicate right, our work and goals um, within local communities uh, with which we work? Um, uh, we go to a village, right, and, and we, we want to do this workshop of restoration, and, and we know it, it has the significance that has to do with the knowledge that we try to try to preserve, but also the the, the, the materials and the, the, the ways with which this village is making. Uh, we want to make it better, but that might be there might be some difficulties in 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 these in, in communicating this right and and trying to talk about it with with the with the local community. So, if if one of you would like to 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 tell us from their your experiences um, uh, on that matter would be uh, would be a great uh, contribution. Yeah, Rizzo, please go ahead. <laughs> Uh, in our experience, uh, we had this privilege of, because my grandparents are from the, the same village that we worked there, so we also had this privilege of uh, knowing some of the people there, but uh, that's, that, that could work for us a little bit to know that how the people, how is the culture in that uh, village and how is everything work. But uh, honestly, because uh, we came from the capital to this small village in the center of Iran as a student, a group of young generation, uh, it's not easy for the, the local community to accept us. It was not really easy because uh, it's something that we jump to their daily life uh, as a 30, 40 people, like in a small village that the, like the, the entire uh, population is like 200 to 300 uh, people. So it's, uh, it takes, at first, for sure, they were a little bit off them, and we didn't try to uh, uh, kind of convince them in a, like meetings or in some talks, but we started to work. Uh, and uh, in advance, we asked the people to accept the rules of the village as a con because uh, small villages are more conservative too. So in advance, we had this kind of uh, alarm and warning to people that, yeah, you have to uh, like respect the rules of the village. And later on, uh, we started to work, and it was kind of nice for us because then people could see that we are not there for fun. We are all these people working every day from 7, 8 in the morning till 5, 6 in the evening, and they are just there to help, and it's not a game for us. <laughs> so day by day, we could see people passing by the site that we were working, and like sometimes they were giving us some food or some snacks, or it was just creating during the time. It's this communication created between the local people and the students. We, we had this like worry in advance that uh, how it could go, but I think it's kind of a step by step procedure uh, to just for the people to create this yeah. and yeah so and actually from other experience that we had we think that to have this communication and this uh, development in the these jobs uh, we have to start in a small scales and then kind of expand it so we started from small projects and then have this at first we had this private owner because then we had this kind of support from our private the private owner of the house that yeah it's Actually, he kind of hired us 
And then in the second project that we were there, we did this. Uh, public, we worked on the public space, and then people, uh, the local community, were uh, passing by and it, like really trying to help us in some day. Like they were coming and they were like, I don't know, giving us some stores, some art. You know, it was just like this. It just created and. It could not happen to it's like I think it's it's just depends on the situation and like how you act but for us at the end of the day it's work uh, in a like day by day experience and being there and have this small communication between one student to one person from I don't know the supermarket and like to see some of one in the street so it's just happen in a really like yeah. step by step yeah. <laughs> procedure thank you thank you Reza. um um, I, I, we have 10 minutes before we open the, because we get some questions from, from, so, um, and, and I would like to cover probably three, three main areas. And, um, I really hope we can uh, probably give like two to three minutes answers to those, and then we can expand on them in the Q and A. Um, so we, we, um, we're talking here about commun communities, and 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 Rizzo, you talked that you you are from these communities, but but for instance, in the case of the Terra Chidia, there is this cross-regional sort of collaboration where where there is a bridge that's been built between the Spain and Morocco, and um, and uh, and and that's in itself I, I find really significant and, and beautiful. But uh, on the and I know Marta, you talked about this a little bit um, in 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 your in your talk. But maybe you can uh, tell us more more about what is the opportunities of these sort of uh, cross regional and cultural collaborations between between two regions uh, in terms of architecture and preservation. Yeah. Well, there's always that possibility. It's true that there is a lot of proximity between Spain and Morocco, and we have some shared experiences. But the same thing happens when we organize the workshops. Uh, people from other regions, like the Middle East, well, the architect in that region has a lot to do with our history, we share the same climate, we use the same materials. So there will always be that collaboration because when you have workshops with people from different countries, they share experiences and these are sometimes taken on by the local uh, artisans. But the participants from other countries, in turn, they also uh, pick up and learn practices that they can uh, put into practice in their uh, countries and regions of origin. Well, obviously, since this is a cooperation effort, this also in involves not only the technical and constructive uh, aspects, but there must be some involvement from the local population who must feel that their heritage and their culture is being uh, uh, valued for what it's worth. Maybe Maurizio can you can you can you can tell us a little bit about um, another aspect with community here um, um, which is which has to do with with inhabiting these structures right you're talking probably about new residents in old buildings. Um, can, can, can you expand on that from the experience of Ganova? Um, specifically, I would probably bring in, I'm bringing this because of we have, we're facing this depopulation of villages in, in many parts in Europe and, and also in, in, in the Middle East and across the world. So you, you, that might be like um, one part of how we tackle this problem. Yeah, uh, so here uh, we have uh, some problem too with uh, the communication with the local communities. The, and uh, so we understood that we, we don't need to uh, talk with them uh, directly, but uh, it's better to show them uh, the work that we are doing. And so we can, uh, we can say much more and we can communicate it much more. And uh, for example, we are uh, working in a village that we call a village laboratory of Gesh. And uh, uh, sometimes we organize uh, like a 
festa or moments to invite local uh, people to um, to see our works and so in uh, in this way we can uh, uh, show them our uh, our uh, work and show them that it's possible to live in this kind of houses in uh, vernacular houses uh, and you can uh, restore and adapt uh, as a modern house and uh, then we notice uh, i'm talking about uh, the time before the pandemic that uh, people uh, who want to live uh, uh, outside of the town and uh, uh, live in these kind of villages are increasing so this is a good point we are at the, at the beginning of course we don't know what uh, what will be in the future but uh, for us is an important step this is uh, the 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 most to us that uh, uh, our work in a way it, uh, it it's good that uh, the message passed to the local community thank you so much Maurizio that's it's a very important and it leads to to a community which we didn't talk about yet which is your your community as, as architects and intervention uh, intervention ex 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 specialists as well and it seems um, it seems that um, th this kind of practice is is um, being more and more um, emphasized um, between architects, young and and uh, and, and probably um, from an older generation uh, of architects. And I wonder whether we we are finding a new possibility for us to I mean to work to have a work actually. And and um, and at the same time, if this type of practice would need to be discussed and this is an excellent panel um, in this conference that are gathering the four of you and and, and, and me who's starting to who wants to do something similar to what you're doing to learn from you as well um, maybe Jonas you can because you you said something about uh, practice of architecture maybe you can tell us a little bit more about uh, whether there should be a regulation to that specifically also because you're, you're, you're emphasizing on uh, non-monumental architecture and, and everyday practices of, of construction. Yes, thank you, Pesan. Um, firstly, I need to say that I do think that this is one of the most interesting aspects, I mean, uh, of a discussion on um, traditional knowledge because perhaps it is less evident. I mean, uh, the way it relates to the challenges that architects face nowadays and not only architects, of course, but, you know, uh, the built environment and our societies in general. But I mean, that um, I, I also feel, and I think that we all share this uh, feeling that we, this is a way of, you know, finding our place as professionals as well and finding or exploring new ways for uh, for architecture, you know, to, to exist today. Because, of course, you may have, you know, architecture for uh uh, elite purposes or commercial purposes, but uh, architecture seems to be more and more separated from the everyday life. Um, and I think that this does also reflect, you know, this gap in knowledge in terms of uh, traditional craftsmanship. And of course, legislation uh, uh, reflects and enhances that, perhaps in an implicit way, but in a very powerful way. I mean, uh, we have all faced uh, the difficulties uh, to build in a different manner than the one prescribed, perhaps, you know, in the current legislation, but also uh, when it comes to protection, because again, the, uh, you know, this uh, understanding of uh, preservation or of protection of the environment or perhaps, you know, of cultural heritage, in our view, is also a bit problematic uh, because it allows, you know, not that much of uh, immediate contact with uh, the subject or freedom or creativity, perhaps, in a sense. And this is why in our previous workshop, we tried to raise these issues. Um, with a couple of round tables uh, where we also invited, you know, uh, policymakers from the ministries here in Greece and also academics and uh, professionals to see, you know, um, how can we, how can we explore a better way of uh, reaching towards, you know, a more engaged way of, of understanding heritage and uh, traditional uh, knowledge. That's, uh, that's, that's uh, really, um important and uh, i mean I, I have we have one minute before we take the, the questions with alejandro from 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 people who are seeing us but, but i hope i would use these final seconds to actually just throw another question that has to do with the um 
I mean, we've seen from the previous two sessions that the, the, there were from the great talks of of, of this morning that there is a, an also um, not a limbo, but this this thirst towards in, um, in involving schools of architecture uh, and education, architectural education in 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 uh, asset learning and crafts and construction crafts and and. I would like whether you have one of like the experiences that one of you had an experience with which you work with a university or with which you actually become um, part of um, um, uh, part of 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 you know a university curriculum of teaching, uh, and 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 I'll take that question further and ask whether whether well that's fine universities can stay doing what they're doing but it's it's these initiatives that will provide the the backyard uh, for students to go and experiment on a on a uh, you know uh, sort of they, they select the courses that they want to attend and, and they would go for it any 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 one of you might want to add to this matter yeah um how so maybe let me let me rephrase that in a more sort of um, direct question. What is our or your role in in architectural education today, and and how are you trying to tackle that um, uh, practically? Yeah, Maurizio, you 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 muted. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, it's uh, of course it's not easy work with uh, sometimes work with university. There's a, a lot of different ways to do that. Sometimes we have a, a professor who, who believe in the in the workshop, and so he can uh, uh, organize everything. But in another case, uh, there's a, a lot of bureaucracy to organize that. So in my mind, I think that uh, the the departments of the different university give to the students uh, more opportunities to join uh, different workshop uh, uh, in order to they are interested interesting and uh, so my role uh, is to join uh, the uh, university course uh, to the uh, local workshop and I'm trying to do that when I want. Sorry, you wanna see? You wanted to say something. Maybe I could also add just that um, you know it's uh, it, it does seem important to also um, see the different roles between you know uh, academic institutions perhaps and groups or teams like ours in a sense. I mean, of course, we do try to uh, link ourselves and invite a lot of uh, professors you know from all universities all over Greece, but uh, indeed it's a different role that we are trying to, to play in a sense and perhaps complement uh, uh, the academic education with this more hands-on perhaps you know uh, aspect but I think yeah the most important thing is to gather different uh, perspectives you know in such events that take place you know for uh, 10 days or something and have different people all together in a safe environment in a sense to, to interact and explore the possibilities of their interaction. Yeah. Any any anyone want to add? Uh, Arizo, you you did the workshop with the with the university uh, in Tehran, I guess, or maybe Marta. Uh, so yeah, do you, or Marta, you 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 can add that. You can add to that as well. Yeah. In nuestro caso, sí que hemos tenido colaboración. Yes, we have collaborated directly with some universities, such as the University of Liverpool. But even in Morocco, we have tried to involve the, the universities of uh, the country. But in Morocco, right now, uh, practice and workshop is headed in a different direction, not traditional architecture. So there are many approaches in different countries. Uh, with respect to uh, uh, traditional architecture, yes, who, who would be who would be telling uh, you know challenging the questions from the public to the to our great panelists? Thank you, Alejandro. 
Muchas gracias. Uh, thank you very much to you all. Uh, I admire very much the work of, of all these associations and it's, it's wonderful to have you all together here. So now we are going to, to address the, the questions coming from the public. Um, uh, if any of, of those attending uh, join uh, late, uh, you know that you can uh, send questions through the different chats which are available. Um, I will be uh, reading uh, as many as I can. I, I, I will start by uh, one question uh, coming from, from uh, Manuel Jardón, who is uh, asking if um, you think that, that, um, that there could be some way of, of uh, making a difference uh, between what uh, are really trained uh, masters and uh, people who are knowledgeable on, on traditional architecture and traditional building techniques and those who who uh, don't have this uh, this knowledge, some way to to create some kind of um, some specifications for the project. So so these are this is somehow uh, a requirement for for at least for particular works. Jonas? Um, of course, I mean, uh, the first thing to say in such a question would be that, yes, uh, we do need to have, you know, trained or certified, you know, uh, craftsmen working on monuments, perhaps. But uh, I just would like to raise, you know, the different aspect of this. There's this danger of standardizing or trying to approach uh, this kind of knowledge, you know, in a way that is perhaps less fit to it. Um, so I do agree that we need, you know, to have um, to, to to acknowledge the value of this knowledge by providing proper uh, training and by, you know, uh, um, establishing some standards. But also just to to raise this question of uh, if this would be enough. In a sense, traditional knowledge did exist and did create what it created uh, in a much different way, perhaps in a much uh, more oral way or a hands-on way. So this is uh, a tension that I feel there, and I'm really on the fence regarding this. Uh, this would be my input. Thank you. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, we have another question, uh, which is um, to what extent uh, your work with these communities and their own uh, ways of doing uh, have uh, raised awareness uh, among the local population and if you have noticed that they have uh, uh, it, it has raised the um, the engagement of, of the very community with the with the with their own uh, traditional building uh, techniques Aresu? Um, for us, I think it it happened, but really in a slow <laughs> a speed because uh, in our second uh, experience that we had this uh, rehabilitation of this water mill, after like after a while, we were receiving a lot of emails in different other villages that yeah, we have this water mill, can you come and we want to rehabilitate this? So it's kind of it's more the I should say this is more for young generation that we, we receive uh, feedbacks that yeah, our grandparents are from this village. Can you like can we have this uh, kind of communication and like kind of working together to rehabilitate this water mill or this place and that place. so it's for us it was more young generation that were thinking about they started to think about their past and their like their grandparents or their parents' villages or rural neighborhood that, yeah, maybe they should save it or they should uh, rehabilitate it in some different ways. Thank you. Any, any other of you want to speak about your experience on this? Well, I, I go for the next question, which is uh, about funding. Uh, of of your initiatives, how are your initiatives funded? And if you are in need of any uh, 
funding from public administrations or you are running these uh, initiatives by yourselves? Mauricio? So uh, we try to make the process uh, self-sustainable and uh, we get some money from a grant. We write a grant uh, as a bank foundation or, or we don't have a lot of money but uh, to rule this kind of experience uh, you i think you don't need uh, tons of money you can uh, go on uh, and just uh, of course uh, the participant uh, it has to there's a, a fee for the workshop uh, and then some money from a grant uh, to buy materials and, uh, and to pay teachers and then uh, you can move on slowly without uh, a lot of money for this kind of uh, situation. Thank you. Thank you, Mauricio. Any other answer? Marta? Well, in our case, it's quite similar. We receive finance through the fees that the participants in our workshops pay. So, and that's a very interesting indicator because uh, project is sustainable uh, so far as there is an interest for these uh, traditional techniques. And for larger sized projects, we do receive financing, uh, external financing. But I think the most important aspect is uh, the, the, there is an interest uh, from the participants in in sustaining, making these initiatives uh, and projects uh, possible. I'm not sure, Celia, that we had this tuition fee from student, but we also had the help from the local community, not like more money-wise, but like giving us the accommodation or helping us with the foods and all this stuff. So. We try to involve the local community, but not maybe just having the real money, but like having some, uh, like, yeah, the, the place for staying, uh, for the accommodation or food or the material. Also, we could uh, have, actually, we had to negotiate a lot, I have to say. So it's not something easy. And we always have this problem of uh, funding for our project. But uh, at the end, after this experience, we think that it's, mm, it's useful and it's like important to involve the local community for the raising money because then they they more involved in the pro project and the procedure of this rehabilitation also. So we try to uh, kind of in advance uh, announce this that we are going to do this project and maybe having some money like a small small uh, like amount of money from each family or each organization or each people that have this. Mm, money that can help but i have to say it's not something easy also <laughs> thank you Arisu. Uh, jonas yeah maybe i could also add something with this i mean um following what uh, Arisu said um i think of course it's a it's a hard thing to find money for such projects and you have to look in all sorts of places in a sense i mean you do have you know to, to search abroad from big institutions you know and also from local authorities um but yes you have also to address local communities and see what they offer and um, perhaps one one lesson from this is that sometimes uh, communities, families, or small businesses, you know, they find it easier to offer uh, what they produce or the services that they do than money. And this is perhaps, you know, an indication of uh, use value against exchange value. This is something that we have learned during these years. And I think this also ties in with the ways of traditional uh, knowledge. So I think that maybe it's important to to see also this hard process of raising money as a pedagogical process for us in a sense and see what we what we can draw from it thank you thank you uh, one yeah Besa. sorry it's just that i had the the because from previous the two sessions there were this um questions about how to link the work of this traditional building with the administrative sort of work on cities and how to provide like uh, infrastructure for artisans to learn. 
And I think the answer is in, so more or less is in, is in these sessions, which is unfortunately the public administration is leaving it to its own. And I find one, one very probably productive sort of practice is to involve these kind of in, you know, um, development projects within the um, administrative work of, of, or policies of developments of small cities and villages and even big ones. That's, yeah, that's what we do. you want to comment about this, any, any of you? Well, we have uh, some 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 more questions. Uh, thank you, Vesam. Thank you very much. Um, we have some more questions uh, regarding the the way uh, this has been already addressed in the in the um, discussion, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit more regarding how uh, current building regulations are um, somehow um, diff making it difficult to work with traditional techniques. So uh, to what extent you can uh, skip the many problems imposed by, by these regulations which are designed to, to promote the building with the industrial materials? Any of you want to answer? Mauricio? So yes, uh, there's uh, many, a lot of problems, uh, and uh, because uh, we have uh, rules in uh, here in Italy, of course, uh, very well done uh, that it fit very good for the, some kind of buildings, but uh, that doesn't work for traditional buildings in a way. So we are working with uh, uh, Polytechnics of Turin, for example, to try to understand better the situation of tall walls in uh, thermical insulation. So we did test uh, and uh, we had some publication about, uh, say, scientific publication about that. And uh, also we want to try to work with uh, uh, the reason, the public administration, to try to start a, a dialogue of a new kind of rules that it fit better to uh, to this kind of buildings, and it will be much more better for architects and, and uh, engineers who are working in this area. Thank you, Mauricio. Any other of you? Uh, there is another uh, question that I will answer myself. <laughs> there is a question from from Manuel Jardón, who is asking if 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 you think if we if we think uh, that uh, new works should be differentiated from from restorations in 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 the in uh, how to to regulate the way they are built if if, if uh, uh, traditional uh, building or traditional forms should be for one uh, or the other um, field and i can answer that that we all think and i'm sure about that, that we all think that there's no difference between restoration and new building uh, because we are all, always building on something on a context which already exists um, and so traditional building and traditional architecture is is a, a solution for for many problems which affect any kind of work and therefore to make a difference between them uh, might might not be um, a good idea is uh, um, the, the idea is to make this as, as wide as possible I, I'm not sure if I'm understanding exactly the, the point of the question but I think that's that's uh, that's it, and I hope I'm, I'm answering correctly to what is being asked. If not, Manuel, uh, do ask, please, again. Um, we have uh, another question from, from Jose Manuel Lopez Osorio, uh, who is uh, uh, sending, he knows the work of Terrachidia, so he's uh, uh, mentioning how much he likes the work of, of Terrachidia in Morocco, and he's asking if, if uh, there's been a change uh, of, of if, if we have uh, felt there is a change in the way um, traditional building and architecture is is, um, is being felt by by local populations since we started working in Morocco in 2012 till uh, till uh, now. If there is there is a change, Marta, what do you think?
Bien, pues... Well. This uh, awareness raising effort moves on very slowly. Maybe we're perceived as Don Quixote is talking about traditional architecture and earthen construction, but they've realized that this uh, is very positive for the uh, to create jobs among the local population. But it takes time. This is a, 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 a gradual effort. And I think uh, uh, they are um, coming to grips with this idea because, after all, they are the ones who insist that this is positive for them and we should continue with these um, initiatives. Well, once again, the regulations are really not helpful at all because sometimes regulations are too strict in saying that the industrial techniques must be used in construction. So for new works, it is very hard to, to embrace the use of traditional construction. In any case, in Morocco, not just thanks to Terechidia's work, but there are other very interesting works, such as Ali Manaji's work. And there are quite a few people working in that direction, really. And they're also trying to open up new ways within the rules and regulations. So it's not easy to have traditional techniques to be recognized as a valid way to solve problems nowadays and in interventions from an administrative point of view, which is one of the main um, hurdles, one of the main barriers for that change to take place and the return to techniques and traditional techniques and materials to be back. To comment about this, uh, it's a very white mother, but... Jonas? Well, maybe I'd like to say that, of course, working with communities is something that uh, takes time. And uh, I mean, there are people here who have worked, you know, for 10 uh, and 20 years, I mean, and have felt this much more than we have so far. But um, I think it's part of how um, complicated it is to try to, you know, uh, fill in a gap that has, uh, has taken place. I mean. I mean, the very work of organizations like ours is, in a sense, um, not natural. How can I say this? I mean, visiting a place and doing a work with a local community and trying to establish a community within, you know, uh, a short period of time is not a way to build a community. So, if I'm, if I understand what I mean, it's uh, it's like uh, we're also this is also modern attitude. This is a modern practice that we're all practicing. Um, but, uh, you know, year after year and uh, project after project, I think, you know, trust can be established and people can get to know each other. And um, indeed, you can have a sort of common values and common practices uh, coming together. And also, I'd like to add that, yes, uh, uh, working with regulations, because this was also mentioned again, um, is indeed a key to, you know, unlocking how we can speak with more, you know, uh, contemporary or progressive terms about traditional knowledge, in a sense. Thank you, Jonas. There are more than what I, I just want to add one other thing because uh, we are issue we are facing another issue during these years because um, like because of this unbalanced development, this local uh, this local community in the rural neighborhood and they year by year they are leaving the villages to go to the city so each year we are losing some of the this local community and like we, it's kind of hard to build this because for example now one of this uh, local craftsmen that used to work now is just left this this village and now it lives in the city so it's kind of uh, tricky to uh, build the community and like have this awareness and to uh, have also, uh, like, yeah, not, not people are leaving the village. It's because there's not just the traditional techniques and like conservation, but more uh, how people like 
live their life and happy and like have all these like all the facilities so it's another issue uh, that we are also facing uh, during these years thank you very much Alessu. Um, well we we have run out of time i want to thank the moderator besam and all the panelists and of course the public for the for the questions uh this uh, wonderful conversation it is great to have you uh, here with us and i hope we can uh, meet more often and talk about our projects because there are so many things in common and um, this is just i hope this is just a start thank you very much to you all. thank you alejandro and thanks for the invitation and uh, yeah hopefully we we meet in probably mauritius village in canova or uh, on in Morocco. But thank you all. Thank you so much for this great panel. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.